Okay, I want to start this video off by saying that last summer um, I finally replaced my fuel senders, which are the floats that with the um, the stuff inside of the fuel tank that sends the signal to the fuel gauges at the dash to tell you know the dash how uh, or to tell the boater how much fuel is in the fuel tank and. What happened was I replaced those and then the fuel gauge just never went down as far as they used to. And so I've been operating under the assumption that I had more fuel in here than I thought I did. And so what happened was a couple weeks ago I was going out for a ride with some friends and we basically pulled into you know a harbor and the boat stopped and couldn't get it started again. And what happened was both of the fuel filter um, plungers, which are these Raycor things right here, um, would, you know, you could push them down and not feel anything. And so we went and we got uh, 40 gallons of fuel and we put it in the left side and the right side and tried to get it started again. The port tank, which is running off of this one, primed up pretty quick and didn't really have too much problem with it and actually that's the one that saved us because what we did is we had to end up changing all of our fuel valves to run both engines off of the left fuel tank because this one here which is for the starboard tank which is all the way across the other side of the boat over there we couldn't get it started again and so for the last two weeks I've been putting more and more and more and more fuel into this pump or into this tank for the starboard tank trying to get it primed so that I can uh, you know run each engine off of its own fuel tank. The trick to getting this thing to prime so that the plunger ball or the plunger button basically um, has some feeling behind it and it's not just simply pumping air was um, I took off the uh, you know, the head of the um, Raycor filter off of the wall, turned it upside down, and started pumping. Because I had actually taken off the filter, off the fuel lines, and I was taking just this off. And when I turned it over, I realized that there was some actual pumping going on. So I thought, hmm, I wonder if I had fuel all the way in the head of this from the fuel filter it would start pumping again and as it turns out I was right I was taking this off to try to go to a trucking a truck stop or a truck parts store or someplace to replace this thing and um, you know turns out don't have to do that so um, I got new you know fuel filters on here and um, or fuel water separators and also a filter but uh, didn't have to replace this. And I think this is like, you know, anywhere from 150 to a few hundred dollars um, just for this one piece, which would have been a pain in the butt to get and wait for and all that kind of stuff. But all I had to do was turn it over and pump it while it was sitting, you know, down there. And engine runs again. So I hope that helps some other stranded boater out there that has run their boat out of fuel and is, uh, um, oh, you know what? Another thing is that right here, this button right here, that's the fuel pump that's on the engine. So hopefully this helps somebody else because on YouTube I could not find anything about how to get this button to actually do anything. Because with the fuel at the bottom and air at the top and in the lines a little bit, there isn't any fuel to move through this thing and so turn it over get the fuel all the way out of the top of this thing pump it and you should be able to get going again like me so hope that helps you bye